Hi, David Odell with Odell Complete Concrete. What we're going to be showing today is how to widen your driveway and fill in your side yard. What we have here is we're on a somewhat of a hillside. You can see the house next door is about four foot above. So it's a retaining wall all the way down. Property line wall, retaining wall. And then we have all these rocks out in front holding the front yard of the neighbor's property up. So we don't want to get into those rocks and start moving those because that could jeopardize the entire front yard if we start pulling rocks out of there. So we're going to leave that as is and we're going to widen it as far as we can without disturbing any of that um, stacked stone retaining. One thing that's important to do is always check for underground utilities before you start digging. And that's what we did here. We basically took a good look at everything around here where the meters were where the cable was and we determined that everything that we're going to be working on here everything that will be affected is a lot deeper than what we're going to be going the only thing we have on this side yard would be the gas line and that's going to be approximately two feet deep or more so we're clear at this um taking out four inches of dirt so there's the side door of the garage and it's nice to have concrete coming out that side door, especially if you have um, your trash cans on this side of the house. So this would be a good place to put them and then you can just roll them right out this new concrete that we're gonna be adding in here. We're just kind of checking the grade right now. We have fixed points that we have to go with, which is the height of the threshold of that garage door and then we have the driveway in front that we have to match so we have two fixed points and we do have some slope because if you think about a garage floor typical garage floor has slope on the inside it has slope to the front it usually has three to four inches in 20 or 25 feet so if we're at the um, top of garage floor in the back and we're at the top of garage floor in the front, that means we have about three inches of slope down that side yard. And then of course, after that, it gets pretty drastic. Probably have about three feet of slope from the front of garage to city sidewalk. So here's how we're gonna do this and maintain that retaining stuff. We're just gonna put a form bender board. We're gonna hold it out just a little bit. Then uh, you can always stack some rock back in there some decorative rock it looks like and I'm doing this a little bit differently as far as dowling goes instead of drilling and dowling into the driveway I'm going to actually just underpin the existing drive I'm going to dig under it and just do it like kind of like an earth tooth or keyway that'll lock those two slabs together for movement yeah well it's day two Already been here. We've been here about 40 minutes. We're just wrapping it up. We're gonna do a little compacting, put the wire in, and we're ready for concrete. It's as simple as that. So first, we'll go ahead and run the Milwaukee battery-powered plate compactor through there. And get it nice and tight. I'm gonna use some expansion foam along that retaining property line wall. And I'm gonna attach it by using some 3M spray adhesive. Really easy way to put your expansion joint on. But before I started gluing, what I did was I took a brush and cleaned any um, loose material off of that wall before I started spraying the glue on there. Then it adheres really well. So in a, in a couple hours, you can wet the grade, you can do whatever you want. And it's gonna stay there until you're ready to pour. It's not falling off, in other words. We're gonna be putting some wire mesh in here. This is a 10 gauge and six inch by six inch squares. And you know what? It doesn't really prevent it from cracking. All it really does is it prevents the cracks from moving. So you're not gonna get lifting, heaving, separating. That's all that wire really does. It just kind of keeps the cracks to a minimal, but it will still crack. And what I've done is I dug underneath the um, driveway. I don't know if you can see it here, but every like three foot, I just kind of made a pothole underneath the existing driveway and that's gonna hold it from heaving or getting out of level in the future. 
You could do rebar dowels also, but sometimes digging under it and getting rid of uh, steel in a coal joint is a, a good idea because you could get water down a coal joint. It could rust those dowels in the future, unless you're using like plastic dowels or something that doesn't rust. But in this case, it would have been a steel. And now there's no, no rebar at all in a coal joint. So the key way is the key. That gas line has a um, sleeve around it too. So I didn't really have to tape it. Sometimes I'll put foam around the gas line or box them out if they look kind of, uh, you know, wonky or they don't look too pretty and they've been there a long time. Uh, but this one had a nice sleeve around it. So that's going to protect that gas line from the concrete shifting and trying to break that gas line off. So what we have here is we've got Kenny on the pump. We've got Doug, my brother, pulling the wire up. And then we've got our camera girl, Jade. And then Eric's pulling the hose back. And I'm the guy screeding the concrete. And what I'm using to do that is a six foot long Milwaukee red stick. So if need be, I can actually read the level as I'm screeding this off just to double check my slope on the way out. And then uh, Kenny broke out some new tools for us today. He's got some Cadillac equipment. And it's a fiberglass bowl float. And he also got some nice uh, cutting tools. I think he's got a, we're going to be using a five foot long cutter and super lightweight. It's for the joints and it's, uh, it's a nice tool. I just used it on this job today for the first time. I was really impressed with it. It's excellent. And then also the Fresno, he'd modified a Fresno. All these tools are from Cadillac and you'll see all the new ones. And once we get to them, I'll talk about them a little bit. So far, all we've seen from Cadillac is the uh, fiberglass bowl float. And according to Doug, as he was using it, he really liked it. It stayed up on top of that pea gravel real nice. The concrete's going off pretty good here. This is a 4,500 PSI, and they did that intentionally. I mean, I could have got away with a 2,500 PSI, but I knew that we're in the colder time of year, so by adding more cement, it's going to go off quicker, cold or not. So I got a 4,500 in here. There's a point when it gets cold enough where I'll even add some accelerators to it, plus bump the PSI up, but right now it's just you know, bumping the PSI up. If it gets colder, I'll start throwing some uh, accelerator in there. Now here's the Fresno. I got a chance to use this and it's five foot wide. This is a six foot opening here. So it's covering a lot of area. And what I liked about it, it was very lightweight. He kind of modified it and he put a rocker arm on this. Very easy to control because it's so light. So it was easy to uh, use that rocker on it. Now here's the new cutter. This thing's five foot long as well. Take a look at that. Nice tool, very light, easy to control. And it cuts the concrete just like you want it to. And nice and straight. I got a little carried away with it. Um, you'll see on the next video, I, just, I got carried away with that cutter and I put a lot of joints in because it was so easy to do. So we've got the fiberglass funny float on there and then also we've got the funny trowel and that's getting it close but inevitably you're going to have to get out there by hand at some point and that's what i'm doing here going down this side yard cutting some joints in so on this same job we also poured a front patio area at the same time um, and that's a uh, random stone stamped concrete and you're going to get to see that in the next video i went out there a little early on this typically i would wait but i knew that i had to get it laid down because i was going to start stamping the front patio and i wanted to be out there to be a part of the stamping procedure so i had to get out here early on this one
So I had a little trouble with my sliders on this hill and they kept wanting to slide down. So what I was doing, I don't know if you can see it, I had to put my toes off of the uh, sliders to dig into the concrete. It left a big mark though, and I had to keep filling in my toe holes. Here's Kenny on the broom. So we were able to broom out the front area where we got sun. We had to wait another 45 minutes to broom the back side yard area. But anyway, thank you for watching the video. Make sure you share, like, subscribe, hit the notification button. That way you'll be notified on our next upload. Have a good day. Bye. Hotel complete. Concrete.